Hey, so they gave me the one minute uh, countdown, uh, but uh, we like to start early. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into this. And so my uh, logs uh, experts in the back uh, challenged me to to start off with some uh, really tough, uh, you know, data, uh, immutable data uh, kind of questions. And so I'll come to them at the end if we have some anybody that wants to get into some deep uh, discussions about data. But uh, hey, I'm I'm uh, Rodney Fogg. I'm the commandant of the Quartermaster School, uh, part of CASCOM, uh, the Combined Arms uh, Support Center at Fort Lee, Virginia, and uh, honored to be here today uh, to talk with you here at the Warriors Corner. And so uh, we're going to talk to you, but really more importantly uh, is we're going to show you something. And so that is uh, the Army Readiness Common Operating Picture. And so uh, what this is is a capability that is inside a piece of software that we've recently completed fielding, uh, the Global Combat Support System Army, GCSS Army. Uh, and so that's an ERP, an Enterprise Resource Planning Software, and that's a commercial off-the-shelf piece of software um, that is a best-of-breed uh, software that we have gotten from industry, uh, and we brought it into the Army. Uh, and really, if you think about this, seven of the top ten most profitable companies in the world use this ERP software. And it uh, integrates logistics, personnel, and finance information. And so a lot of uh, uh, organizations, large-scale organizations like the Army, actually uh, attempt fielding and bringing this into their organizations, and they fail. Uh, but over the last uh, four, uh, five years, we've brought this in. We just finished uh, increment uh, one of GCSS Army in November of 2017. Uh, and really early, we've been able to bring a capability early within GCSS Army, within this ERP, uh, for business intelligence. And we have a dashboard capability for our commanders that we've really been able to bring into this uh, capability about two years early, and that's what we're going to show you today. Uh, commanders will be able to look at readiness data, uh, equipment on hand, uh, type of dashboards and views, um, you know, whether their equipment is functional or not functional. They'll be able to see that uh, easily. Uh, we'll, they'll be able to drill down uh, into these views and see, uh, you know, purchase order uh, level information down to bumper number, uh, pieces of equipment, uh, work order data, uh, and they'll be able to tailor their dashboards and their views to see uh, what is going on with their readiness at echelon. So down at the very lowest unit at the tactical level, all the way at headquarters department of the Army. I can see the whole Army uh, with this capability. So it's very powerful. Uh, ERPs and GCSS Army is able to do this. This is an initial capability that we're showing you today. Uh, we're, we've tested it with some of our units and we're getting great feedback with a limited user uh, evaluation. And then in May, we're gonna provide it to the rest of the Army. Uh, and it's, uh, again, an initial capability. And then over, uh, uh, as we look out, uh, what we want to be able to do is improve it to where we can see other types of commodities, not just class nine and other supplies uh, and maintenance, which is what we can do with it now, but we want to be able to see ammunition. We want to be able to see fuel. We want to be able to see transportation capabilities, even medical uh, capabilities, contracting capabilities, personnel. We can, we can bring all that data into this capability. Uh, and so that's what we're talking about today, and we're uh, very pleased to be able to demonstrate this for you. And so with that, I really am just the opening act and not the expert, and so I have Harold Whittington with me uh, off to the left, and he's standing here so that he can see the screen. And then in the back, I got Chief Drew, who's uh, running the program. And this is near real-time integrated information, and we're gonna show you some of these views, which are tailorable by the unit that wants to see them. They can change them uh, the way they want it. 
uh, and you can use it at home station, you can use it at CTT, CTC, or you, uh, uh, NTC, JRTC, or you can use it while deployed. So with that, take it away, Harold. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, great intro. As uh, General Fogg said, this is a, um, you know, our initial capability that we're rolling out. So what I'm going to do real quickly is kind of orient you to the screen just so you get uh, some familiarity with it. So if you look over to the left, um, there is the capability to task organize. So Chief, you could just kind of open that window up to show, I mean, so you can go in and task organize. Uh, in the way by um, UIC information um, as well as um, uh, and, and, and grab whatever organizations you want to uh, actually look at. Uh, and so the system will go out and it will actually um, allow you to do those particular things. And so it's going out and pulling the whole tree near real time uh, so we can go out and see uh, specifically what we, uh, we want to uh, actually look at. And so he's just giving you an example where you can see that. All right, Chief, you can close that. We've already got, uh, you know, we got a limited time, so we want to show you that. Right now we've got, uh, like I said, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see we've got organizations. What it does is it rolls up your uh, readiness for that, uh, the organizations that you task organize, so they don't have to necessarily be organic to you. Um, you can grab your units, you can grab any of the units that we've got in the Army, and you can pull those in. Uh, in the center, you got the um, overall equipment readiness for the organization that's selected. Uh, and so it shows you what you know the FMC is, the on-hand capabilities for those, and then whether what percentages are either uh, non-mission capable supply and/or maintenance. Uh, to the right, we've kind of got a, a uh, an interactive uh, bar graph that allows you to uh, see those top non-mission capable uh, pieces of equipment that are um, uh, non-mission capable. Scroll down just a little bit, Chief. Um, um, as we roll out a little bit up, um, just so I can catch that, that heading, um, what we're looking to, to also bring to uh, the field as we roll out in May, as General Fogg said, is some additional capabilities. Uh, so there are alerts where you can actually um, um, build in capabilities where we can see where things that are causing non-mission capable status, whether that be supplier maintenance, um, that are there. Um, and then we've also got, uh, you know, dollars to FMC there at the bottom that kind of highlights, you know, okay, for the equipment that I got down, uh, this is, you know, the roll up of the cost estimates to actually, um, you know, bring that back to fully mission capable. All right, so we're going to go ahead, uh, Chief, and go over and, uh, and uh, we're going to look at three core. And so he's already opened up uh, three core to be able to look at them. And so we can go, go and look at, uh, from an overall readiness standpoint, uh, their view. And so what's happened from the first screen is it, it uh, changed to, to their readiness. And so if he scrolls down, we can look um, at all of the divisions that are in there and where they sit at today. Uh, and of course, it uh, categorizes by red, green, um, you know, even yellow. Uh, and, you know, if you've got, you know, some dead fleets, it'll identify those also. Um, so we're going to check and go to 1st Cavalry Division within the 3 Corps. Are we there? Yeah, okay. And so we're looking at 1st Cav. And so from here, we're going to go in and we're going to look at a unit. So we can go down and show you how we can drill down and look at the uh, lower level. All right, so what Chief's gonna, what he's done is he selected uh, one of the actual UICs. Uh, and so what the system's doing right now is going out uh, and it's doing a quick query against uh, the enterprise. Uh, we're doing this over a hotspot uh, to, to where we can go out and see uh, that particular equipment and what the status is for that. So this will take a few seconds, probably about 20, 30 seconds. Um, Again, this is our um, initial capability as we roll out. You know, the intent is to get this to about 10 seconds as we move forward. And so while, while that's pulling in, uh, what you also have uh, capability-wise here is uh, the ability to tailor and save and and actually uh, build your own dashboards. When we talk tailorable, each individual user that logs in the system can save it in their favorites. And then they're able to use that particular, uh, those screens uh, uh, to see whatever readiness they want. And so you can build multiple views. Maybe I want to look at a brigade and some separates. Maybe I want to look at a division and some separates. 
um, or I want to look at a lot of different units. And so you can go through and you can save those particular um, settings. And then every time you come in, you, know, you can look at that equipment by doing a refresh. You also have the capability to, to take that, um, that information and share it with somebody. So if you're a material manager somewhere and, and you went ahead and created some views, and those views that you've created, you want another manager to be able to look at those views, uh, you can go ahead and create those and then you can send them to another manager so that everybody's looking at the same data. Um, as we go through the, the rollout capability, what we want to be able to add is, is even data entry at the manual level. Uh, so what we're talking about is for systems where we don't have a, an automated feed, we want to be able to uh, capture information like log stat, um, as, as General Fogg said, for like bulk fuel today. Um, we'll also be able to look at ammunition until we get a feed in to be able to get that information. All right, so what, what Chief's done now is he's pulled up the screen, and so now you're looking at equipment, and you can see all of the different lens. Um, that are associated with that. And so just a quick view, as you can see, we got our ERC-A, ERC-P, we can see what our FMC is, we can see that we got a non-mission quantity, uh, non-mission capable quantity of two on like the first line, and it's down for supply. Um, and then the drill down capability um, allows them to click in, and when he clicks into a, a piece of equipment for supply, it's gonna actually go up and it's gonna give him another screen uh, and so as that pulls through, it's going to have um, <clears throat> all of the associated information at the lowest level. Uh, so what's the bumper number of that piece of equipment? Um, what are the parts on order? Um, you know, how many days has that piece of equipment been down? And so that's what you're looking on the screen right now. Um, and so you're looking at the different pieces of equipment, when the work orders were created, uh, and it shows you all of the uh, statuses against that, that uh, particular uh, piece of equipment. Uh, in the rolled out capability that's coming in May, from here you'd be able to grab the work order. And when you grab the work order, that would transition you with roles and permissions and authorizations um, into the uh, GCSS Army productive environment. So what's that mean today? Right now we're still in our BI, or our business intelligence instance. Um, but the capability that you, you'll have that will be delivered in May allow you to transition seamlessly into the enterprise. So if you're a maintainer, um, or if you're talking uh, property accountability, um, you know, and you're looking at some supply activities, you'll be able to transition with authorization into the solution uh, and look at the line item level detail and impact that. And so if you've got a piece of equipment that's down, you know what the reason for the, uh, that is, and this maybe the clerk didn't go in and make it not uh, fully mission capable. So you can go back and put it to fully mission capable, hit the save, post that record, and then when he does a refresh on the dashboard, that information would be updated, and then the dashboard percentages would change, and you'd be at uh, whatever percentage you'd be, uh, regardless of uh, um, or, or real time as it actually occurred. All right, so I know that was a lot of information. I want to make sure I'm staying on time. I know we got a little bit. Um, you know, again, this is, is the initial capability that we've got, it, that we've got out there. All right, there we go, had a little feedback. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is open it up for questions. Um, you know, like I said, we just want to make sure we uh, show, show the field this. Uh, last thing I'll say before I go there is, right now, to gain access through the, to this, if you go to LIW, through, so we're uh, working with LOGSA, you can go out there. You have to request system access prior to May, but the intent is in May, all users that have, have uh, LIW or RCOP access will get access. Uh, and then you'd be able to take advantage of this and all of the other things we have in RCOP. So um, there, you know, there's there's quite a few different workbooks that are out there. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows we've got that information. Yeah. So subject to questions, uh, um, sir, I'll turn it back to you. Yeah. So you got to stay here too, Harold. You know, if they ask a hard question, I'm passing it. So questions, please. Anybody? Well, Mr. Yerby, I know you have a question. <laughs> All right. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, go ahead. General Falk, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Doug. We just talked about it. Um, so the ability, so as you create the hierarchy for material managers at Echelon, one of the struggles over the last couple of years has been 
the ability to transfer manager's notes uh, to the next echelon of material manager so that the next echelon doesn't have a cold start. Will this capability provide that capacity, and if so, when? It wasn't a prep question, I promise. Go ahead, Harold. Rod, so, so, so we're tracking that. Um, we're looking at the different ways within the, the interface to record that information. Uh, we do have it on our uh, short list of capabilities that we want to add. Um, the challenge you know, that we wrestle with is not only the transfer, but then how long do we want to hold it, how long do we want to retain it, um, and then what's the forcing factor to clear it out so that it stays relevant. Um, uh, but we are looking at different ways to get after that uh, so that we can address it. Uh, there is a text capability within the solution that allows you to add that. Uh, we just want to make sure that we deploy it to where it's uh, both efficient and effective. Is this for all three compos? It is for all three compos. And as we've executed our uh, limited user evaluation, it has included uh, reserve, National Guard, and active units. Yes, sir. So we've got uh, almost 100 folks across uh, all three compos to include uh, user uh, and user pack uh, who are actually out there using uh, the limited pilot uh, uh, capability today. Uh, and then, as we said, come May, uh, the uh, intent is to expand that across the force, all three compos to get at that. All right? Another sidebar. You know, we, home station alignment in terms of task organization is one thing. And then when you deploy um, the ability to tailor the force tree to be able to now take those plug and play units that you now have mission command, does this capability provide you that agility to be able to do that and track? So there, yes, so there's a component within uh, GCSS Army that you can dynamically task organize against. And that's one of the major uh, uh, you know, positive things about uh, the, ca the capability. Um, one of the issues that we've had is that deploying and redeploying is uh, you know, somewhat difficult and we, we want to streamline that uh, capability. And so working with the Department of Army, uh, we've recently uh, got a working group to streamline a process that's longer than we would want it to be down into days where it has taken you know, really uh, multiple weeks to execute. And so uh, working with other organizations to put in all the right data and have derivative type of uh, multiple UICs and DODACs assigned against uh, every unit. So when it deploys, it has a home station capability for those types of data that it needs and then it has a deployment capability data set. Uh, so that will uh, definitely enhance the overall capability of the system. And if you have anything yes. to add there, Harold. And so, so yes, sir. So right now, um, through RCOP, there, there is no restriction. So you can task organize, you can grab any unit within the Army starting at the highest hierarchy to the lowest. And when you task organize that data, it's gonna reflect what your percentages are. So if you wanna add an engineer company, you wanna add you know, a, uh, you know, even an artillery battery, you bring it in, it's gonna adjust the scorecard to, to reflect that. Yeah. All right. So, sir, I do have a question. I just want to uh, ask a question for clarification. You said to get access, I go to LIW, but what if I'm already a G Army user? Right. So, just to clarify, so we're doing a you know pilot right now. So today it requires a system access request. So that would come through my organization back in, in uh, Cascom to gain access. Uh, but after release in May, the, we're going to bring over all of the in, uh, LIW users that are already out there. Uh, that need access to this capability, so you'll already be grandfathered in. The intent is to grandfather you in, and so I think we're talking uh, just over 70,000 or so users that'll be automatically added in as we roll out the initial capability. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.